Hello and welcome back again. Today what I'm looking at is, uh, well I'm going to tell you a little story um, because this idea came about not from me but from um, one of our customers um, and initially I poo-pooed the idea thinking that it wasn't really worth it but it relates to one of these now this i made a while ago it's a desk set and it's got three of our kits on it um the, the pen kit a clock in the middle and a letter or memo holder at this side um and um i don't mind telling you his name it's glenn glenn said wouldn't it be nice maybe if instead of having a clock in the middle you had a little picture and my initial thoughts were well there's not much point in doing that because there's thousands of people that sell um, cheap Chinese um, picture kits and you'd just go and buy one of those wouldn't you um, and then I looked and I actually couldn't really find anything I found a small one in brass which wasn't too bad but I couldn't really find a wooden one um, there are one or two um, and they are um, what's a nice way of putting it cheap and nasty um, and sometimes you don't want something cheap and nasty you want something a little bit better um, so what I'm going to do today is uh, use a couple of parts that um, we've sourced and I have to say yes you could go out and buy these on your own um, I was going to say without any bother that's not true because I can tell you putting these small kits together has actually taken us months to find a decent suppliers um, for the uh, the three or four different parts that are involved in them it has been a lot more complicated than you might think and also turning a little picture frame it is maybe not quite as straightforward as you think you would think it would be like turning a bowl that you turn one side turn it around and put on the other what makes it a little bit more complicated is the fact that you have to go all the way through the uh, the, the project um, so you're in danger of hitting the tools on the chuck um, but you'll see as I go along um, how I go about it. I'm sure, as always, there's lots of other ways. Um, it depends what equipment you've got. I try to use, wherever I can, bog standard normal equipment that everyone has. Um, and certainly in the workshop here, um, I try to use normal equipment because there's nothing worse, to my mind, than someone showing you a fantastic product and then you find that the piece of equipment they're using costs five and a half thousand pounds. It's no wonder you can make something nice with a five and a half thousand pound bit of equipment. It's out of the reach of most people, sadly. Um, but anyway, we'll crack on with a, a small picture frame. The next question is, what do you get in a kit? Well, you don't get one kit, you get two. Uh, here's one of the packs. You can see there's two plywood rear sections in there, two clear acrylic discs in the centre, and there's also a pack of fittings on the back. I'm not going to open those because they just rustle and make a horrible noise. But those are the metal fittings on the back there that you can see. And they spin around like so. So you can get the back on and off the picture frame. Now it is said that acrylic apparently has far better optical quality than glass. How true that is I don't know. But what I do know is you're less likely to cut yourself with it. And you're far less likely to break it than you are a piece of glass. Which is why we've gone for that. So a pretty simple kit. Um, let's go on and have a look at how we actually put one together. So got uh, a scrap bit of beach here. And this was destined uh, to be going uh, for kindling. But I've nipped down to the um, log store. And nobbled this back. And there's a little bit of... Um, a little bit of knottiness there um, and I've got some of the parts here that we're going to have a look at and I'm going to try and get the knot on the edge so it actually appears in the frame just to give it a, a little bit of character in there uh, but I, the other project that I showed you a, a few minutes ago uh, the clock frame was around about 85 millimeters so I'm going to um, mark out 85 millimeters roughly on here cut the excess off on the bandsaw and then pop it on the lathe and we'll show you how we go about um, finishing and making one of these little uh, frames. Now what I could have done was drill a pilot hole in this um, eight or eight and a half millimeters and use a wood screw and attach this to the wood screw and then turn it round. Well I thought I'd try and do it a different way. So I've got it between centers. I'm going to turn this round. Having mounted it, what I'm actually going to do is unmount it um, because I've got a, a center point there and I'm just going to mark with a compass a radius of 25 mils which is going to give me a diameter of 50 mils which should be hopefully pretty much the same size as the kit we're looking at there um, I've used the compass because it gets me right smack bang in the middle if I put that on I wouldn't quite know necessarily where it is this is quite a chunky bit of wood so um, 
you can use whatever size wood that, to, that you like obviously but even though this is quite thick we can trim this down um, when, it, uh, when we start to turn it. So having done that and got all my points in the right place I'm going to remount that, turn it round and just take this little loop, uh, this little section out the centre here to make a small dovetail if I can get the tool in there so we can get it set on the jaws. So I've mounted this on the chuck, um, but actually let's take it off and show you what I've done. Because the way I've done it, I've actually got um, the angle in the wood is not ideal, it's sloping that way, so it's like the opposite of a dovetail. This isn't particularly big, so I'm fairly confident I can put it quite safely on there. I am going to get it quite tight on there, just to make sure it doesn't fly off. And as I say, it's not very big, so I don't think I'm in danger of uh, death or anything like that. What we've done is a 50mm hole on the back. Now, the thing with the picture frame is the hole at the back needs to be bigger than the hole at the front. So this bit is the back of the frame and this bit is the front of the frame. So we now need a, to A, get this flat and B, mark a point that uh, is less than 50 millimeters. Now how much smaller than 50 millimeters is entirely up to you. I'm going to go for 45 millimeters. If I was cutting this a different way and I was using a hole saw, I would probably use the 44 millimeter, which is a standard size 44 millimeter hole saw, um, just to mark exactly the center, which is be the front of the frame. Hopefully that makes sense to you. So I'm just going to double trim this and trim it flat and then we're going to look to measure 45 millimeter diameter for the front of the frame. I have my compass and pencil which frankly could be sharper but never mind uh, and my steel rule so uh, as every good schoolboy knows half of 45 is 22 and a half so my radius that I'm going to set on here is 22 and a half millimeters and to do this on the camera is really difficult uh, let's make it about, tell you what, let's make it about 20, 23. As long as we make sure that we've got less than 50 mil, a smaller than 50 millimeter hole in here, we should be okay. Because of the way I mounted it to start with, I've got a little point there for the center. That's going to fit in there and we'll just turn that and mark that. Just to double check, we'll take the kit and make sure that it fits and it does it's quite tight there actually it's quite close to that but um, it's up to you I could make that fractionally smaller um, but we'll go with that for now and this is now the front of the frame so what I'm taking out now is the is the front this is the smallest aperture that we're going to cut now the point of doing the front um, we can carry on with this and this is the point where you can decide exactly how big you want the frame this is looking pretty big to be honest probably a bit too big for the size um, face we've got in here you can double check and make sure your face doesn't fit through that hole because it's not supposed to fit through the hole on this side and you can also decide how deep you want the face to be from the front of the frame now I've gotten quite shallow here you do need enough to turn this round and remount it back on the jaws again so don't just leave a tiny amount um, I've probably I reckon that's probably about four millimeters on there I could easily go deeper um, but I'm just going to put a little bit of a shape on there now um, and also uh, just trim this part down here just to give it a bit of shape I've now turned it around again so this is the back and we're now going to get this flat and take a bit more out of this section here and then decide really how wide we want this frame and make sure we've got enough depth and this is the point where um, we've specifically chosen the sizes we have because they're easy to turn backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards we tried a lot of different sizes and some of the sizes the jaws are just so difficult you will spend all your time changing jaws or finding jaws that don't fit um, we use uh, record chucks uh, and record jaws i don't think they're very different to many others on the market um, so there's a good reason why we've gone with the sizes that we have
and you'll see I've broken through there so I can begin to see the jaws and now is when you need to be really careful that you don't tool too far in and catch your tool on the jaws in there. We'll stop and just make sure that we can fit the kit in the back. Not quite, it didn't quite fit in there so we need to make that just fractionally wider. There we go, that now fits in the back. I may have even made it slightly too big. Right, I'm not going to take this out this time. I'm going to turn it round again and go from the other side to take out this part here. This time when I'm mounting it on the jaws, I'm not pushing this all the way back onto them. I'm going to leave a gap to make sure when I take this out that it is not catching. I'm not going to catch the tool on the jaws. Now this is the bit where it's a bit more shaky because you need to set it up and set it level pretty much by eye. And you can see I've got a little bit of a waver there. I, I may have one anyway. It's not the end of the world if you do because all we're doing is actually removing the scrap in there for this but we'll get it as level as we can do and the thing about these frames is the narrower the frame you make the more difficult it is to do and um, I don't know how wide this frame is we'll have a we'll have a look in a bit uh, but I've got that remounted it's not right next to the jaws I can see the end of the jaws by looking down through the hole there and I'm now just going to take this scrap out of here So I've taken the scrap out, it's still looking a bit tutty. I'm going to take it back off the chuck again. And I can remount it back on the other side. Now I can see where the jaws are. It's actually a bit easier to set it in and get it straight. He says that's completely wonky. There we go. So there's a lot of backwards and forwards, toing and froing with this, and that's because you go all the way through. If it was a bowl, you weren't going all the way through, it would be so much easier. Let's just check the fit of that. So we've got the back that fits in, and we've also got the clear face that fits in there, and we need to make sure that we've got these sections are pretty much flush with the back. These, this is sticking proud at the moment, the frame, so I need to take the frame back a little bit. Um, and it may well be that I need to take a little bit more out of here as well. Depends where I want these to be in relation to the front of the frame. There's a lot of ifs and buts with this. It really depends how you want it. What I'm showing you is uh, how you get the holes um, in there to fit the different parts. We're now looking at the back of the frame and I've trimmed out the um, centre section again so when I put the clear face, it's got a cover on it at the moment, uh, the clear face and the back in there, they should be slightly inset from the frame and the reason for that is because you're going to put a photograph 
um, or some kind of picture in there which is going to make it stand proud um, not it doesn't need to be too far out it depends what picture you've got the fittings that go on the outside are flexible anyway so it's not the end of the world um, and in actual fact if you wanted to you can leave yourself a lip around the back here to make sure that if you're hanging it on a wall uh, that it all fits flush so I'm happy with that uh, I'm going to give that a quick sand and I'm then going to seal that So again, we're now at the front, it's taken a little bit of a lining to get it level in there and making sure that the jaws aren't touching the front because we're going to have to come and sand right up to the edge here and I don't want to be catching my fingers on the chuck jaws in there, thank you very much. So again, we can do final finish on the outside here um, and then we'll look at polishing up and putting the rest of the kit together. And there we have basically a little frame and we'll just double check that we can fit the face in there and the backing behind there and what we need to do now is put some fittings on the back to hold that in place. So having finished the front and making sure that we've got the bits that uh, slot in there I'm going to turn it over put it down here and we're now going to just finish putting these little fittings in now for these frames because they're round these have a little pin sticking out there's a variety of these you can I'm not sure whether the camera will pick up on that there's a little pin sticks out the back just to help secure them um, and I'm going to put three in there one two three and to secure the back firmly um, I'm just using um, one of our really sharp pointed awls just to put a hole in the right place it's not really critical where you get the hole I'll just put that in there so having screwed the three securing pieces on the back all we need now is a photograph um, and we're just going to use the back and just I'm just going to draw a circle around the, the back of there and cut that out I haven't done this isn't photo paper I've just printed a, a photo of my wife um, on there and we're going to trim them out and pop it in the frame then what we need to do is to take the backing off the clear face and I have to say this is the devil's own job I've got this bit started already so I can show you that it peels off and what we're left with is just the clear face like so and here we go we're going to pop that into the frame then we'll pop our picture in then we'll pop our back in and really I wouldn't normally do this in the workshop I would do this inside well out of the way of any dust and there we have a finished picture frame oh it appears to be a picture of Kylie there not my wife hey ho so there we have um, this little um, finished frame obviously there's so many variables with this so many things you can do you might want to hang it on the wall you might want to make a stand at the rear for it for which you might need a hinge to put on the back um, if I was going to hang it something this small personally I'd just drill a hole and hang it on a pin because they're not very heavy um, so basically um, sadly you don't get Kylie Minogue with the kit um, what you do get is the clear face the backing and the securing pins um, but we think that is quite a fun project and looks quite nice and it's not a cheap frame obviously you can make it as individual as you want as large small thick thin if you want to do pyrography on it or carve things into it you could do that um, we think that's quite a nifty little project and I've quite enjoyed doing that so there's a lot of turning the project round on and off the lathe um, but the end result we think is really quite good um, and I don't know this 
for a fact, but I suspect this is the kind of thing that will probably sell rather well at a craft fair. Um, so until next time, safe turning. Any questions, drop us an email. We'll see you again soon. Bye-bye for now.